pot. The two former cabinet ministers are holding back-to-back -back press conferences in their ridings to discuss their political futures. We're going to bring you those announcements and reaction live in just moments. But with me to walk through it all before that is the host of CBC Radio's The House, Chris Hall, and CBC's polls analyst, Eric Grenier. Hello to both of you. Hello. Nice to see you. I might have to rudely cut you off. I think I see Jody wilson Rebel actually heading up to the panel right now, so I, I can't even give you a chance to speak yet. We'll just we're going to head over to Jody Wilson Raybould's press conference. We'll take a listen in live, and we'll be here for reaction right after. Uh, you are a leader among the first uh, the, the British Columbia First Nations, and you build a strong reputation as a bridge builder uh, between communities, but also as a uh, champion of good government and accountability. I'm going to skim a little bit over all your accomplishments, but you served as a provincial crown prosecutor, became advisor to the BC Treaty Commission, were elected commissioner by the chiefs of the First Nations Summit, and twice were elected as regional chief of the BC Assembly of First Nations. Then you were elected MP of Vancouver Granville, and you were the first Indigenous woman or man appointed Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. <laughs> Today, however, we are gathered here because in the tradition of your ancestors, you have served us with great respect and integrity as MP for Vancouver Granville. In 2015, we went door knocking, promising to change the way politics is done, and boy, did you ever deliver. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. <laughs> Good morning, Gaila Kusla, everyone. Uh, I am incredibly honored to be here this morning. I uh, would like to thank Wade uh, Grant for the welcome to the territory, the ancestral lands of the Coast Salish people, in this case particularly uh, the Musqueam. Thank you for your, your ongoing support. Um, thank Marple Neighborhood House for um, letting us be one of the first events in this beautiful new facility, uh, and which was opened last week. Thank you to Jasmine and to Dominique. Merci beaucoup for the, the introduction. And thank you everyone for coming out this morning. I know it is a work day for most, if not all of us, and uh, thank you for the messages of those um, who could not be here but wanted to be here. So let me start by saying that um, it has been one of the greatest honors of my life to serve as uh, the, or the Member of Parliament for Vancouver Granville. And I want to thank all of uh, the constituents for your ongoing and con or your continued support. I've always been incredibly grateful to hear your views, questions, and suggestions. So today is a good day. I love um, to see the faces in the room, and I am incredibly happy to be home in the riding to tell you about the decision that I've made. It is after much deliberation that I have decided to put my name forward for re-election in the 2019 election in Vancouver Granville. <laughs> And in this election, I will be running as an independent candidate. So I want to tell you why, um, what brought me to make this decision. So in recent months, I've found myself in uncharted waters. Now sitting as an independent in the farthest corner on the west side of the House of Commons. During this time, I've had the opportunity to both reflect on what I, we, could learn from, about from the events that have transpired, and have had the opportunity to hear from friends, colleagues, family, my husband is here, my sister Corey, my niece uh, Kaya and Kayleen, and of course many of you, the constituents of Vancouver Granville and indeed Canadians from coast to coast to coast. 
Incredibly, I have received over 15,000 emails, letters, cards, messages expressing support and encouragement. Many of these giving advice and sharing thoughts about what, should, what I should do next. So thank you, it really means a lot to me. The overwhelming message I received was clear. Clear how we need to do politics differently. That partisanship is trumping principle, that exclusion is trumping inclusion, and the lack of diversity of voices was simply unacceptable and there is too much power in the center. In addition to the people kindly thanking me for what I did and asking that I remain in federal politics, I was consistently told by people young and old from all backgrounds that the events had inspired them, motivating them to get involved. Above else, to not be afraid to speak up, to speak truth. They were asking me to keep up the fight and stay involved. For every person that has come up to me on the street, in the grocery store, in a cafe, or in an airport, let me tell you it has been you who have motivated me to make the decision today, to keep working alongside you to build a stronger Canada. I know that it will not be easy to run a campaign as an independent. There will be challenges. But with your support, I am confident that running as an independent is the best way to go about, go about it at this time and the best way to transform our political culture. So let me say a few words about what being an independent means to me and why I believe it is important. We sometimes hear that politics is a team sport, that politics is also a blood sport. Well, I do believe in the importance of a strong team, but I'm not sure that there has to be any blood involved. And it is far too serious a business to call it a sport. After all, it is the lives of people and our future that is at stake. We live in complicated times for our communities, our country, and globally. Everywhere environmental, economic, and security challenges are deepening. Moving forward, we cannot be, afford to be complacent. We cannot use the same ideas and attitudes and practices that brought us to this point to deliver the solutions we need. Yes, Canada is for sure one of the best, if not the best, countries in the world in which to live. But we can never take it for granted. In the face of the great challenges our world must address, Many places in the world have chosen to erode democracy, traffic in fear and promote division, naively thinking that the response to the interconnected challenges that affect us all is to try and to protect a few and put up barriers. The truth is we have to do the opposite. Here in Canada, we have to build on our strengths and accomplishments that brought us together as a nation and allowed us to prosper. When the challenges we have to meet are collective ones, we need to respond through shared and joint efforts that use the distinct ideas, talents, and expertise we all have to offer. And in this reality, there is less room for overt partisanship in our evolving democracy. Rising to these challenges requires Ottawa to operate more openly and transparently in the spirit of nonpartisanship with increased cooperation. That is what I am now, more than ever, as an independent committed to advocating. As an independent, I will be truly free to take the guidance of the citizens of Vancouver Granville and to represent you. I will not have to try and convince myself that just because the way it has always been done means that it must continue to be done that way. As many of you in this room are aware, I came to Ottawa in 2015 from an unconventional political background to most. 
Before 2015, I had never been involved in provincial or federal politics, and I had never been a member of a political party. My leadership experience before running to be your MP has been in the Indigenous world, advocating for transformation in the relations with Indigenous peoples. As some of you know, in my cultural teachings, we strive to work through consensus. While there are a diversity of views, tensions, and challenges, we do not entrench them in political parties, and we often frown on personal ambition. The commitment to consensus, the importance of speaking the truth and striving to honor and uphold each other, these are the core values of my culture and teachings. This is what I know. In asking you to elect me as your representative four years ago, I pledged that I would strive as best I could to act differently than we had increasingly become accustomed to by politicians. And please don't get me wrong. I take great pride in what we have accomplished over the last four years. Many important initiatives were advanced both locally and nationally. But I wonder what more could have been accomplished on big issues, the big issues of our time, if it was a less partisan environment. And here I am thinking about how we tackle climate change as a matter of individual and collective health and well-being and as a matter of economic prosperity and national security. On this issue, in particular, I see my friend and colleague Elizabeth May and the Green Party of Canada as natural and necessary allies. Climate change is the issue of our generation and we need to move the conversation forward and develop a plan that is non-partisan, multi-generational, one that will survive the life of any government. Likewise, as an Indigenous Canadian, it is also important to me that reconciliation be purposeful and lead to a stronger system of cooperative federalism where Indigenous peoples are full partners in Confederation. This is good for all of Canada. Yes, we have made progress, but it is not enough. We can and must do more. As an Independent with like-minded colleagues, I can promote this. Moving forward, there are many other issues we need to discuss. Our riding, Vancouver Granville, is one of the most diverse in the country and growing really quickly. And we need to continue to focus, working at all levels of government on issues such as housing and transportation, to name a few. I will be engaging in discussion on a wide range of policy issues throughout the campaign, but importantly, I want to hear from you. So talk to me. Please visit our website. Um, it goes live sometime today, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> Your thoughts are most welcome. I also want to say this. We can support others to run as independents or to act more independently. My good friend and colleague, Dr. Jane Philpott, is making an announcement today about her political future, and I want to acknowledge her continued leadership. MPs, then you might think that see a need for a different way of doing politics and who do not like the current limitations of the party system. What some of us like to call independent partisans. These people want to collaborate. To be independent does not mean you're alone, working as one. On the contrary, it means you are committed to working with everyone. So my commitment to you. I will ensure that you have a strong voice in Ottawa that will work with whichever government is in power, as well as with all MPs, no matter their political stripe, for the betterment of Vancouver Granville and our country. And when I say independent, I mean it in the true meanings of the word free from outside control, 
not depending on another's authority and not depending on another for livelihood or subsistence. The only thing I will depend on is the vision, service, and support of citizens in this riding and listening to the voices of Canadians from coast to coast to coast. But I need your help. To expand the idea and the role of independence, I first need to get re-elected. <laughs> and this is where you come in. This is where you come in and this is how we need and will continue to work together as we've done before, as we've done for 15 months preceding the previous election. I would welcome you to continue to volunteer, to donate, but most importantly continue to spread the message and have conversations about nonpartisan approaches to politics and solving major issues. So in closing, I am looking forward to the campaign. I know in all circles the campaign has already begun and I'm very much looking forward to our ongoing conversations. I am incredibly excited. It's been a long journey. I'm focused and I'm committed to working hard with all of you as we move into the 2019 election. Gala Kusla, thank you for your support. Thank you for coming here today. Just joining us now, this is a special edition of Power in Politics. I'm Vashi Capellos. We are just listening to Jody Wilson-Raybould, the former Attorney General, former Liberal Cabinet Minister, uh, who quit Cabinet over the SNC-Lavalin controversy. She has just announced that she will be running in the next federal election as an independent. Uh, she said a number of things about why she decided to do so. Essentially, that she will be truly free to represent uh, her constituents in Vancouver Granville. She also spoke at length about uh, sort of doing politics differently in the way in which she entered politics in 2015 and how she wanted to kind of fulfill that idea. I've got CBC, the host of CBC sees the House, Chris Hall, standing by with me, as well as CBC polls analyst Eric Grenier. Uh, we're standing by to see if Jody Wilson-Raybould takes any questions, but let me get some initial thoughts from both of you. So, Chris, Jody Wilson-Raybould will run as an independent, not with the Green Party. There had been some yep. speculation, uh, especially after her meeting with Elizabeth May. She says she sees them as natural allies on climate change, but she wants to run as an independent. Yeah, it's interesting. If she really does mean that we want to do politics differently, that crossing the floor, so to speak, or joining another party wasn't necessarily consistent with that message. So as an independent, she's saying she will work with the government the day on the issues where she can find some common ground. She mentioned uh, Elizabeth May, as we had all thought, Elizabeth May telling me recently on the House mm -hmm. that she thought there was an opportunity for them to join, both she and Jane Philpott, to join her party. So in the end, she will tra to travel a road that not many have successfully over the years. She will run as an independent. Uh, the Liberals will surely put up an opponent against her. It's in riding that she probably has a good chance. Eric will have better numbers than I do. Uh, but it is a different thing. She was a star candidate in 2015, got lots of help from the Central Party. This time she won't have those call centers and the canvassers and the same numbers necessarily uh, that she had when she was running for the Liberals. Yeah, and she acknowledged that. She said, I know it's really hard to run a campaign as an independent. Eric, talk a bit about, give us some context about mm -hmm. how hard that actually might be. It is very hard. Historically, only about a third of MPs who went from a party to, to run as an independent have successfully been reelected. And that win rate has actually gotten worse in the recent years when there's been le more attachment to parties. Uh, but that riding in Vancouver Granville, it was won by pretty s a healthy margin. Uh, the second place party uh, was only at about 26, 27 percent. So that if uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould is able to get a good chunk of her vote from 2015, it might be enough to win in a four-way race. But uh, what I found interesting about her comments was that she was really almost running a national independent campaign, talking yeah. about needing to get other independents with her, uh, that it was about changing the way politics is done and the importance of democracy. You, normally, independents, when they run, they run as a, I'm going to stand up for my local constituents. It's a very localized sort of campaign. So it's a different approach. It's interesting. Yeah, because she spoke about, for example, she said, I know politics is a, it's traditionally known as a team sport and a blood sport. I get the idea that it's a team. I'm paraphrasing right now, but there doesn't have to be blood in it. And she spoke at length sort of about the idea of less partisanship and how she had heard from, uh, she said she got 15,000 letters or emails or messages of support, many of which contained advice 
all of whom she said wanted to see less power in the center, less partisanship. Right. What do you make of this? She also, uh, uh, it's interesting. She also mentioned there are MPs who chafe at the idea of party discipline and would like to be able to work across the floor on issues of importance. Um, that's often easier said than done. That certainly has been our experience here is that independents don't get the same face time in House of Commons. They don't get automatic questions. They don't get seats on committees. It is hard to be able to advance your interests and to form that coalition. And the party system has been around for a long time. It isn't, uh, it isn't there because it's the only game in town. It's there because it actually has worked up until now. So if she's talking about changing the way business is done in Ottawa, that's interesting. It will be interesting, even more interesting, to see who she gets to support her in this. Yeah, and I think it's a legitimate question to ask if you're, you know, if you're talking about the need to be... Oh, actually, sorry, we're going to head back there now because I think she's about to take some questions. Let's listen in. Jody Wilson-Raybould taking questions from reporters after announcing she's going to run as an independent in the next election. Running for, the assembly of First Nations as uh, uh, running for the Assembly of First Nations. I had the great privilege of being the regional chief for, for many years in the Assembly of First Nations and will continue to work with the regional chiefs and the national chiefs in whatever capacity I find myself. Um, I know that my time in federal politics isn't over. Um, as I said, it's been a unique experience for the last little while sitting as an independent member. Um, sitting as an independent member has opened up um, many different conversations that I might not have had um, previously. I have spoken with members of parliament from all different political parties. They have been um, very open to providing me uh, and other independents uh, the opportunity to speak in dialogue debates in the House of Commons. Um, but likewise, it also provides me with the opportunity to um, speak directly from the people of Vancouver, the voices from the people of Vancouver Granville and express them on the national stage. And I'm going to continue to do that um, and discuss issues that are free from partisan consideration that truly reflect um, the desires here and how we want to move. But how much are you actually going to get accomplished as an independent? Well, I'm uh, looking forward to, I think I'm going to get accomplished, we can get accomplished a lot, working together, removing partisanship, working to, um, as a first priority, to change the way the parliamentary system uh, operates, to make sure that all 338 members of parliament have the ability to, one, ensure that they can relay the views of their constituents, participate more fully in, in, or in uh, committee meetings, and to participate in, in debate in the House of Commons. I think it uh, would be an incredible benefit uh, to um, lawmaking and the development of sound public policy to ensure that all voices are heard, uh, that all voices contribute to the discussion and in doing so create better public policy. Have you completely ruled out being national chief though? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm looking forward to doing everything I can and working hard to uh, be the independent uh, member of parliament for Vancouver Granville. That is my priority and that is what I'm committed to doing. Well, I, I mean, I think that's a, a question that you need to ask the Prime Minister. Um, I will say this, I, it has been, uh, it's been a challenging five months. Um, I um, find myself in a place that I never expected to be for as I've said, doing my job and speaking the truth. And I regret that it has come to this place. Um, I think that some of, well, the issues could have been resolved a lot sooner. Um, but being in this place now has given me an enormous amount of time to reflect. And I am really pleased and happy with the decision that I've made that has been bolstered by so many people that have given me advice. And I can speak for myself personally. I'm going to continue to um, operate and work with integrity to ensure that I speak the truth and to relay the, the voices of the people of Vancouver Granville and I hope that all politicians in the House of Commons and I know that um, the vast majority if not all people that sit in the House of Commons want to do what's right and represent their communities. So.
But should uh, a voter a voter of this riding uh, vote for you rather than whoever runs liberally? Uh, if they're the liberals, but I mean. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I. I <laughs> I, I don't believe that votes are um, simply need to be divided among three or four political parties. I believe in the people of Vancouver Granville. I believe in Canadians um, to make informed decisions about policy, informed decisions about the individuals that they um, are going to vote for. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue to work hard to um, get the support and continue to have support of the people in Vancouver Granville. Um, I, what, who I am is um, always present. I don't hide from that um, sometimes, maybe to my detriment. But what you see is what you get. And if you ask me a question, I'll, I'll ensure that you get an answer. Uh, you uh, you uh, was talking about uh, too much power in the center. And that was also a criticism of Stephen Harper when you ran for the Liberals. So are you talking about something particular to Justin Trudeau moving, uh, becoming too much power in the center, or are you talking about a larger trend? Well, I, I'm speaking broadly about partisan politics generally and political parties. I do not believe that being a member of a political party should mean that you have to set your principles aside or have to make decisions because somebody told you that that is the decision to be made. Um, I, again, believe in the importance of, of a strong team and putting forward um, uh, solutions to issues. Uh, but the challenge that, that I had, um, and I can only speak for myself, is when I got involved, and it was a really hard decision back in 2013, late 2013, um, I believed that we would be doing politics differently, that um, each member of parliament would have a role to play in public policy and lawmaking, that members of cabinet would be able to determine the way forward and lead the files. Um, I'm incredibly proud of the work that, that I was able to do with a huge team um, as the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General. Um, but I think that we need to ensure that the voices of the elected representatives of the ridings across the country are the ones that are making the policies on behalf of their constituents, not being um, dictated to or told what to do by non-elected individuals that happen to, to, to work in offices. Um, we need to move beyond what is traditionally um, thought of as the, as the establishment to individual voices of members of parliament to make sure that the issues that are of concern here are reflected and incorporated into the discussion. Thanks, and you also talked about the, the Green Party and you talked about Elizabeth May. Yeah. Um, there was rumors of you joining, so, uh, and you talked about them being natural allies. So what, what does that mean in practice, or what do you think it will mean in practice as an independent? Well, I, I mean, I had the opportunity to speak with um, uh, Mr. Singh, but um, I had um, many conversations with Elizabeth May. I consider her a friend. I consider her a colleague. We share um, so many um, approaches, the similar approaches to politics, to wanting to move beyond partisanship. Um, she uh, uh, was very actively um, seeking for uh, myself and uh, Ms. Philpott to run for the Green Party, and uh, believe me, I considered it um, very seriously. Um, for me, uh, personally, I know who I am, and I'm not a party person. I'm not one that looks to take a square peg. If you're peg just joining us now, we are watching Jody Wilson-Raybould, uh, the former cabinet minister, uh, announced that she that is going to run in the fe next federal election as an independent candidate. She's taking questions from reporters, but we're going to head over to Markham right now, where her colleague Jane Philpott is set to make an announcement about her political future. Let's take a listen in. It's This land was being farmed by the Huron-Wendat, when just a few kilometers north, there was the biggest Huron-Wendat village in North America, and they farmed thousands of acres of corn around us. And after the Huron-Wendat were here, 
the Haudenosaunee were here, and the Anishinaabe made this place their home. And then the Reesers arrived. <laughs> And the Stouffers arrived in the early 1800s. And then they brought their relatives from far and wide. And you brought your relatives. And we have all made this place our home. So I want to start by acknowledging those who have gone before us and cared for this fantastic land around us. And it is our job, as we live together and share this land in peace and harmony, uh, to work together for good. I do want to thank the Reesers for opening up this beautiful farm market. It's true the strawberries aren't quite ready. You'll have to come back in a few weeks for the strawberries. Uh, but what a beautiful venue on a beautiful day. I want to thank Jay and Miriam and for all of the volunteers who have pulled off uh, this wonderful opportunity to be here. I'm happy to see you all. And I wanted to make sure that when I made a decision, when I made an announcement, that you, as representatives of Markham Stouffville, we didn't invite all 100,000 constituents, but invited as many as we thought we could fit in. Uh, I wanted you to be the first to know about the decision I made. And many of you have been asking about it. Uh, I've been deliberating. I've been getting your advice. And now I've made a decision. So I'm going to cut to the chase. And I'll give a bit of explanatory details later. I want you to know that I have decided to put my name forward as a candidate in the federal election for October 2019. And I know you're all wondering what color I was going to wear today. And I didn't want to give any way hints. So I am going to run in the federal election as an independent candidate for the people of Markham Stouffville. Thank you. We're going to do it together, yes. All of us, all of us together, independent. Now, some of you may be surprised, and there's probably a few of you who are wishing for something different. That's OK. I heard a whole range of advice. Being a member of parliament for the people of Markham Stovall has been an enormous privilege. And when I did ask you for your advice, you gave me all sorts of suggestions. But the most common response I heard from you was, please stay in politics. Please offer yourself again. So the next decision was how to do that. But you know, I've been really proud of what we've been able to do. And it's not me that's done it. It's, it's all of us together. I have an amazing constituency office. A big uh, kudos to my, my team up there who really provide a great service. And I want to keep providing great quality federal services for the people of Markham Stouffville. So that was one of the reasons that I thought, I'm not done with federal politics. But I also was impressed by the people who stopped me on the streets in the grocery store, in the pharmacy, in the restaurants, in the community. And one of the common things that I would hear, I can't tell you how many times people said this to me. It would be a parent who would come up to me and say, I want to tell you about the impact your story has had on my daughter. And they would say, I have a 12-year-old daughter, or I have a 16-year-old daughter. And when my daughter saw that you stood up for something that you believed in, and that you weren't afraid to speak the truth, and you weren't afraid to sacrifice your career, they have learned from that how to be courageous and how to take steps, not always knowing the outcome. And so for, it's for those young girls that I want to say, there is a future. Don't ever be afraid to speak the truth. Don't ever be afraid to stand up for what's right. And would it be for those young girls if I were to walk away? If I were to walk away with my tail between my legs and say, you guys are too strong for me. I'm afraid of you. What lesson would it be? I need to persevere. Exactly. So we are ready for a new lesson to say, hang in there. Speak for the truth. The other thing that I heard over and over again is people said, we are getting really tired of hyper-partisan politics. Can't we get beyond partisan politics? They said to me, the system seems dysfunctional. It seems like all they're doing up there in Ottawa is fighting with each other. And there's a disconnect. We don't feel like the people in Ottawa are connected to us, the people. 
And party politics is a big part of the disconnect and the dysfunction. And so I heard what you wanted. You said you want politicians who will treat each other with respect, who will collaborate and work together across party lines, who will believe in what is possible and find the voices, find the minds, find the creativity across all parties to solve the big problems that are facing us. We want to solve problems across election cycles so we don't have one party bringing in a whole range of initiatives and then as soon as the election happens, the next guys tear it all down and start with another whole range and waste a lot of time and money in the process. If we could build those solutions together across party lines and say that this work is going to outlive this government, it's going to be bought into by people across the political spectrum, then we can really get stuff done. People want politicians who are authentic, who really present the real deal. They want politicians who are accountable, who are willing to admit that from time to time we make mistakes, but we're going to own up to them, and then we're going to get things right and move on. And people want politicians that are bold, that realize we have some serious existential threats in this country. We have threats like climate change that is literally putting this planet at risk. And I'll just pause on that because look around, those of you who can see out a door on these gorgeous fields out here on the ninth line in Markham. This is the place, one of the places on earth that's going to be affected if we don't make some serious changes. Think about what would happen to this Reeser farm and the next Reeser farm and the next farm if we have serious drought in the years to come, if we have floods, unexpectedly high rainfalls. You ask a farmer, and there's plenty of them in this room, you ask a farmer if they care about climate change and they're going to tell you it's a serious problem. We have to keep feeding this planet and we're not going to do it if the climate keeps getting warmer and warmer. We have only scratched the surface on what has to be done for climate change. And together, we can go the next level. We're, we know that we're always going to need power. We're not going to stop wanting to travel. We're not going to stop wanting to plug in our devices and use electricity. But we should have bold new investments in alternative sources to get that power and energy. And it's going to take a bold transition to do so, but it's the right thing to do. We need political will. And who better to build political will than independent voices that aren't afraid of anybody? <laughs> As we talk about climate change, I have to give a shout out to my amazing colleague, Elizabeth May. Many of you know that, that Elizabeth and I have had a lot of conversations in the last few weeks. I think she is doing fantastic work. She needs to be listened to. She and her green team have outstanding ideas for the future of this planet, and I intend to be her ally. I intend to work with her to fight for the kinds of initiatives that will save this planet. We're going to do it together. We have so many other big challenges. Look, we've got work to do on democratic reform in this country because I have learned in the last few months more than I ever knew in my life about the fact that the system is broken. We need to find a way that every voice, when they go to the ballot box, will know that their vote counts and that they will be well represented in Parliament. We have an amazing amount of work to do on Indigenous rights. I know how much the people of Markham Stovall care about that because you tell me that all the time. And they, those are huge challenges that we're facing to make sure that the rights and well-being of Indigenous peoples are respected. Our country will not move forward effectively unless we respect those rights. But these are all the kind of big challenges that we can't solve if we're constantly fighting with one another. This is a cry for cooperation. Let's cooperate. Let's collaborate. That's the only way we're going to solve these hard problems. And so I'm hoping that today, as I announce my candidacy as an independent, that others across the country, nobody else in Markham Stouffville, hopefully, at least not too many of you. I mean, if you want to, like, jump in. This is for everybody. But I hope across the country, other people will say, you know what, none of the parties is exactly me. Like, I can't fit myself into an exact box of a party. But I feel like I could represent my community well. Then go for it. Go for it. We need independent voices who will work with independent 
partisans to solve the big problems of our time. You know, it's kind of a funny word, the word independent. It, and it, it strikes me as a bit of a paradox because you think that maybe independent means you're not prepared to work with anyone, that you're going to go it alone. That is absolutely not the case. The truth is that independence will work with everyone. White goes with everything, this color, just in the same way. It looks great with blue and orange and red and green. Bring it all on. We're going to work together. You know, the past, the past couple of months, much to people's shock, I have actually enjoyed being an independent member of parliament. I would never have thought it was possible. I didn't lose my voice. I found my voice. There is no longer a political party telling me what to say. There's no longer a political staffer telling me how to vote. There are no longer corporate lobbyists that are influencing the direction that I would go. The only people that are the boss of me right now are you. You, the people of Markham Stovall, you're the boss of me. But no political party is. We're going to work together. We need bold, independent action on the biggest problems facing our community, our country, and our planet. And I am going to need a lot of help. I'm thankful that many of you have already said to me today that you're ready to help. You're ready to dig in. Well, I hope that nothing I've said so far has dissuaded you because we need to all work together. And I hope you'll get on board. The, I have a website which, if all of the technical geniuses have done things right, I'm seeing a thumbs up that we have a website that's now gone live. So people can check that out. I'm going to need dozens, if not hundreds, of volunteers. We're going to start our first canvassing this Saturday. We're meeting at the beautiful Village Hive just down the road in uh, Old Markham at noon on Saturday. We're going to talk about how we're going to get out in the community, and then we're going to go knock on some doors. So if you're free on Saturday at noon, please join me for that. I am going to need people to put up beautiful lawn signs. I've talked to some of the artists in the room about how we're going to get creative. We're going to you know, make the most beautiful lawn signs in the country here in Markham Stovall because there are no rules. We are going to paint outside the party lines. And I am going to need some financial support. So if you find it in your ability today, tomorrow, in the months to come to be able to make a donation, I believe there are volunteers who are set up to be able to accept donations today. I'm going to be honest with you. There are a few things that are rigged a little bit against independent candidates. I can take donations effective immediately. I can't give, I will give you a receipt if you make a donation today or in the next couple of months. Uh, between now and when the writ drops, that receipt will not be eligible for a tax credit. So I'm going to ask you to make a bit of a sacrifice in the next couple of months if you can. Starting when the writ drops, any donations made after that, which will be roughly the beginning of September, all of those will get a receipt for tax credit. So I'm just, this is all about telling you the truth, and that's the way it works. So if you can give a donation now, or if you want to wait until the writ drops, we will need some support. I want to hire a campaign manager. I need a campaign office. We have to order some of those beautiful signs as we create them together. Uh, and spread the word, please. I believe for an independent to get elected, we're going to need to get people out to vote that don't ordinarily vote. And I totally think that that's possible. Because there are people who stay home because they say, nobody represents me. I see those people. I see those parties. And I don't feel like I fit anywhere. Well, you don't need to fit anywhere. You just want to believe in democracy. And you can put your name on a ballot for an independent candidate. So let's find all those people who don't normally vote and get them out. That is part of it. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to take some questions in just a few minutes from my friends and neighbors of Markham Stovall, and then we'll hopefully have time for a few questions from the media. I wanted to end off, I wanted you to go from here and use your imagination about what this is going to look like. And I thought I'd 
help put a song in your head. So in a few minutes, once we break up here, I, thanks to Mike for the great songs that he's been playing today. The song hopefully he's going to play as everybody goes out is a song by Rachel Platten. It's called Fight Song. And forgive me all the Mennonites in the room who don't like the fighting connotations, but I think you'll, I think you'll be OK with the fight song. You know what, the reason I like this song is because it speaks to not underestimating the potential of small things, of one, what one small thing can do. And this, the, this song starts off like this. It says, like a small boat in the ocean, sending big waves into motion, like how a single word can make a heart open. We may only be one seat, but together, we can change the world for the better. Don't doubt yourself. Let's go out from here and do great things for Markham Stovall and Canada. If you're just joining us now, you're watching a special edition of Power in Politics. That's former Health Minister and Treasury Board President Jane Philpott. She has just announced, following a similar announcement from former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould, that she will run as an independent in the 2019 federal election. We've been standing by watching both press conferences, along with host of CBC Radio's The House, Chris Hall, and CBC Polls analyst Eric Grenier. So not really a surprise by the time we got to Dr. Philpott, because we had heard uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould make the same announcement. Both are going to run as independents. Something that jumped out at me, at me, I know it jumped out at, at you as well, Chris, is this idea they're, they're speaking almost as if it's, they're hoping it becomes some kind of movement, not just their own individual choice. Yeah, remarkably similar speeches using almost the same terminology, identifying climate change as the big issue. Uh, I was most interested, though, Vashi, that they both referred to Elizabeth May, the respect they have for her, and the issues that she is championing are ones that they share, yet they chose not to join mm -hmm. the Green Party. So set off the top, it might be because if you're doing politics differently, crossing from one party to another, uh, doesn't send that kind of message, but clearly they face an uphill battle as independents. It's not an easy run, but they are certainly trying to get the message that we can work together as independents on selective issues and be able to get some things done. So yeah, and, just watch. And they both identified, like you said, climate change as a big issue that deserves to be worked on across party lines. That's they, they talked about their fondness for Green Party leader Elizabeth May, but ultimately, Eric, both of them decided against running for the Greens. Mm -hmm. I haven't really heard either of them answer specifically why, and instead chose to run as independent. Can you break down the rotting separately? Because I think they're, it's kind of two different stories in a way about what their chances are. Yeah, absolutely, because Markham Stouffville is really a two-horse race between the Liberals and the Conservatives. It's a historical a swing riding. Uh, so uh, that gets more difficult for an independent candidate. And for Greens, the Greens don't have any presence in the GTA. Uh, so it might have been a bit more difficult. In a riding like Vancouver-Granville, which is a much more of a competitive landscape, an independent candidate can maybe win with 35% of the vote. Uh, and when you hear the two speeches, Jody Wilson-Raybould was almost like she was running a national independent campaign as their national leader, whereas Jane Philpott was talking much more about the local race, mentioning that she was going to be knocking doors. Uh, it seemed to be a bit more focused. Even on climate change, she brought it towards uh, farmers in markham Stouffville. So I think that might be a reflection that she has less confidence that she can be elected than uh, Jody Wilson. The, the attack on the party system, too, by both of them, I think is really interesting because parties historically have been where you aggregate public opinion. You decide on a platform to advance the interests of the country and, and the communities you represent. They seem to be eschewing that whole idea that th this is something that you can work with because we heard, as Jane Philpott was saying, she was subjected to pressure to vote a certain way, mm. uh, to support a certain policy. She even mentioned corporate lobbyists, lobbyists public, yeah. but never said about what. Uh, two things that I, I would point out here especially in Markham Stouffville, vote splitting will have to be an issue to take into account. If she draws votes away, and we assume they would be predominantly from the Liberals, uh, that may help the Conservatives win that seat. Probably less an issue in Victoria Granville, but still one in which an uh, independent candidate drawing a lot of votes away, if she wins, obviously it's worked. If she doesn't, it might lead to an, uh, well, an outcome she hadn't expected. You mentioned this a little bit earlier, Eric, but remind us and our viewers about how likely it is that someone who turns to be an independent mm -hmm. actually is successful in the election. It's not very likely. In the past, about a third of independents who were elected under party banner then ran as an independent were successful in that, and that rate has gotten even worse in, the, in more recent years. And if you look back over just the last four decades, there's only been about uh, four MPs, I think, who've managed it. And none of them are really ones that had a huge impact afterwards. Uh, so certainly she will have a challenge, Jane Philpott probably more than Jody Wilson-Raybould. Um, but uh, certainly to, to hear, uh, to build off what Chris was saying, uh, a lot of what they were talking about was about reshaping the political system. It, it does show how they are 
new politicians because the system's obviously been in place for uh, you know a century and a half, and there's a reason for it. Um, it won't be easy to reshape uh, federal politics uh, based on you know these two independent uh, candidates. I want to also welcome all of our viewers who have been joining us on YouTube, on the CBC Politics Facebook page, and as well on Twitter. We are taking a number of your questions, and we're hopefully going to field them. We'll jump back in and maybe listen to a few questions uh, when Jane Philpott starts receive receiving them from reporters. I believe she's just getting them uh, from the crowd right now. Uh, let me start off with uh, Kasra. M asks on YouTube, will Jody Wilson-Raybould join the Liberals after Trudeau is no longer leader? Chris, you can <laughs> well, feel, I mean, it's an, I think it's an interesting question it is because an interesting question. obviously totally they, it was an indictment of, of Justin Trudeau's leadership. That's how they posited it. They talked about that now too, sort of contrasting this idea that they were promised a system in 2015 that would be very different from what had been done in the past and that didn't end up materializing. And they both spoke about being reluctant to take the kind of pressure from the right. center, which is the prime minister's office to do certain things. Look, I think it's entirely possible that if you look at the Liberal Party, uh, that if someone like Jody Wilson-Raybould felt Felt that it was Justin Trudeau who had turned away from her, who had subjected her to this inappropriate pressure to cut a, cut a deal, if I can put it that way, with SNC-Lavalin and its criminal prosecution, uh, that she might have left open the door to return. She didn't join another party. She's sitting as an independent. And if you listen to what she has to say, she doesn't criticize the liberals. She criticizes the prime minister, the center. So I think that's entirely possible. And I mean, both of them, Eric, had been, uh, I mean, yeah, they criticized the prime minister, but even when they quit cabinet. I remember uh, in Jane Philpott's letter of resignation, she said, I will continue to serve uh, as, an, as a liberal member and I intend to continue in that role. I'm firmly committed to our crucial platform priorities, especially justice for indigenous peoples and implementing a plan to tackle the existential threat of climate change. I mean, remember, they quit cabinet but remained, tried to remain as mm -hmm. liberals until ultimately the prime minister kicked them out of caucus. And being an independent maybe makes it a bit easier in the future if there was a new leader who might run on a platform of welcoming those voices that left the party. Then it does give them more of an opening than if they had to cross the floor to the Greens and then cross the floor back to the Liberals. So it certainly gives them the option. I don't imagine that is anything that would be likely to happen uh, with the current leadership. And, and a, an interesting question as well, Derek from uh, Derek J. Cassidy, I think on Facebook as well, asked, how strong is her voice going to be as an independent candidate, candidate in Ottawa? I mean, that's a really important question right now, right? Because there is, a, there is whether you like it or not, there is a system in place uh, that determines how much time you have to speak, for example, how many questions you can ask of the prime minister, at what point, what committees you can serve on. But if the question was about as candidates, they will get a certain a lot of coverage, at least initially, from the media because of who they are and because of the stances that they have both taken. Uh, look, I think Jody Wilson-Raybould is a serious candidate in Vancouver, Granville, no matter what color or banner she, she wore. Uh, and I said Jane Philpott is a very serious candidate. Just remind people, Jane Philpott was widely regarded as, as, if not the most, one of the most competent cabinet ministers that Justin Trudeau had. So she will get a lot of attention as a result. So to the, the, the basic question that was asked, yes, both of them will receive receive coverage. Both of them will have very strong points and they're both very good campaigners and very good on their feet. All right, I'm going to head back actually to Markham. Let's take a listen in. Jane Philpott is receiving some questions from reporters. We'll listen in for a bit. Years of reflection, studying their policy, studying their, their platform and what they stood for. I had to make a decision in a much shorter period of time and unless I could feel like I was 100% authentically green, I thought the most honest thing to do was to say, you know what, I I'm not sure exactly where I belong because I see good in all parties. I see many good things and I see problems in all parties. That's why I want to run as an independent. There are countries in this world like the Republic of Ireland that has some 18 independent members. In Canada, we haven't had that tradition, but why not start it? It's a great idea. We're going to start it. We're going to show how it works. Uh, given Can you what you just said, yeah, I'm Chris Glover with CBC. Um, given what you just said there, do you see yourself rejoining a political party at this point? One thing about politics is it's very hard to predict the future. So <laughs> uh, I will be running as an independent candidate, and if the people of Markham Stouffville want me to represent them in Ottawa as an independent member of parliament, then I will take that mandate given to me by the people and go to Ottawa to work in that direction. After that, Four years down the road, who knows what will happen. The people have the say, and if I am running as an independent, that's what they can expect. Another supporter alluded to it already uh, about how the Liberal candidate who runs against you will have a very hard time. Um, how concerned are you as someone who once supported the Liberals 
and who doesn't often see eye to eye with the conservatives necessarily, that this move might see ripple effects across the country and make it more difficult for liberal candidates to beat the conservatives in a general election. So I think every person who puts their name forward on a ballot, whatever party uh, they are running with, or if they're running as an independent, needs to work hard, needs to prove themselves to the people of their riding, and seek to get elected. It's no question that I think the Liberal Party has a, a, an overall awesome platform. I don't think any party has a perfect platform. So I'm going to focus on doing what's best for the people of Markham Stouffville. The people of Canada will decide who the government is that should be in place. Madame if you're just joining us now, we are listening to Jane Philpott take some questions from our own Chris Glover there. Uh, Eric, I'm with Eric, um, uh, Eric Grenier and Chris Hall. Eric, interesting question brought up there on the idea of vote splitting, and that's mm. something we had sort of surmised about, uh, that if, if Jane Philpott does, especially in that 905 yeah. riding, right, how serious a, a problem could that potentially be for the Liberals? I'd say particularly in that riding, that would be a serious problem, and... A, and a likely outcome, I would say, rather uh, maybe more of a chance that the Conservatives win this riding now than Phil Potwood is an independent, just because of how that riding breaks down. I think it will be very difficult for her. It doesn't mean that she won't be able to do it. Elsewhere, I mean, we've already seen that the Liberals have taken a big hit in the polls nationwide as a result of the snc Lamalay affair and the resignations of uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. So that has already happened. And right now, if there was an election today, the Conservatives would likely win it. Has there been any movement from, uh, from you know, initially right after that sort of died down, after the scandal kind of died down to, to now? No, it's actually settled down. And it's almost maybe that we're in a new reality going into the summer and into the election campaign. When we think about what happened after the India trip, where their numbers had taken a similar plunge, it recovered very shortly afterwards, that just a few months later. We haven't seen any real signs of that just yet, so it suggests that the damage that was done out of this might be sticking with it until at least a campaign when people start to maybe uh, pay a little bit more attention and are stacking up the options a bit more than they might be doing right Final now. Final word from you, Chris. Very quickly, the challenges of running a campaign before the rate is dropped. We heard Jane Philpott allude to it. She can't give receipts for any money that she raises. She's not going to have a Liberal Party team behind her. So that is a challenge for both Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. But I've just looked, reading my own Twitter feed, lots of people engaged in the idea. Can't, why can't we elect independents? Why can't they make a difference in, in the political system we have today? As you noted earlier, there are imbalances. If you're a bigger party, you get more members on committees, you get yep. more time to ask questions, these kinds of things. So it is interesting. It will be interesting to see if they carry that sentiment into the ballot box. Anyway, to recap, Jody Wilson-Raybould, Jane Philpott will run as independents in the next federal election. That is a wrap for this special early edition of Power and Politics. We'll be back, though, with a lot more political reaction at 5 o'clock Eastern. Thanks so much to CBC Polls Analyst Eric Grenier and the House's Chris Hall. I'm Vashi Capellos. A lot more coming up. Stay tuned.